Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pixel Village and I'm Radha Krishnan. Now, I know a lot of people. I know through my friends, I know directly and I also know many of them through the comments that I read in our videos that they are not really getting into photography because they don't have the right equipments in their hand. While that may be true for a certain kind of photography, for example, let's say if you want to shoot a tiger in the wild, of course you need a long lens. And if you don't have a long lens, uh, then better not attempt it because it will probably will be your first and last shoot if you attempt with any other lens, uh, you know, shooting a tiger in the wild. And if you want to shoot, let's say a macro, a jewelry, um, a flower, um, an insect, of course you require a macro lens. But that's for those specific needs. But for majority of photographers, all you need is a decent camera and a decent lens and a decent light. The rest, everything, I would argue that it is limited by only your imagination. To explain that very point, um, in this video, we thought we will use some equipments which probably, according to us, are the cheapest in the world to buy and use. So, how much can uh, 2,000 Indian rupees, which is under $30, can buy in the photography world? Nothing much. Well, let's see how much we can buy with this. Well, you can buy one of these and still have some change with you. It's called Digitech DFL088. It's a camera mounted flash. Of course, it doesn't offer any of those frills that these uh, new flashes are offering like the TTLs and the HSS and the short flash duration, etc. It is just a flash, but a good one. And probably the most cost effective. We will not really use the word cheap because cheap has many connotations. So uh, most cost effective flash. Uh, from Digitech. Well, uh, this one has a guide number of 40 at 100 ISO. Guide number is probably the easiest way you can identify the power of a flash. Now, this one has a guide number of 40 at 100 ISO. It means that um, at 10 feet distance and at 100 ISO, at full power of this flash, you will get an aperture of 4. Shutter speed is immaterial, not really related to the flash because uh, shutter speed doesn't really control the flash output. Well, we tested that and we found that it is a little more powerful than f4. It actually gives you 5.6. So, that's one. And uh, since it's only 2000 rupees, we thought we will get one more. Okay? That's under 4,000 bucks. Two flashes and with the change that is left over, a small trigger too. So, two flashes and one trigger, which means you can uh, mount this flash on the camera and shoot. It's got the bounce card, it's got the diffuser. The second flash can be used as a slave or both flashes can be off the camera. Use this trigger on the camera and trigger them from whichever direction that you want. So. I think it is a decent setup for any photographer, especially someone who is getting into wedding photography. And also, how about getting some flash accessories too? Let's get it. Yes. 
no this is not exactly what you think this is this is from digitech it's called the flash boat it has a, a diffuser it's got a bounce uh, card well something like a bounce card and it's got multiple uh, gels it's got a honeycomb a very well made flash accessory under three and a half thousand rupees and using this flash boat and these two flashes let's get into a shoot and find out what kind of images are we able to get out of this i'm not really promising great glamorous images with these products it can actually create but what we're going to see is how effectively one can use it and create very good looking images and probably encourage you to get out of your seat and start doing the job rather than thinking about that jackpot that you're going to hit one day and then you're going to buy all those fabulous equipments and then you're going to go and get into those shoots into the shoot. I have the DFL-088 mounted on the camera. Like I mentioned, this flash doesn't have a TTL mode, nor does it sync on high speed. Uh, I have purposely selected an entry-level uh, DSLR camera, a crop sensor camera from Nikon called the D3400. Because of these uh, limitations, we have to shoot in completely manual mode, correct? There is no electronics helping us to understand the flash output. In such situations, uh, well, two things can help you understand the flash output. One will be ideally should have been the flash meter which of course we cannot even talk about because we are talking about the cheapest flash uh, so flash meter is out of the way the second one is your own experience your eye of course don't depend on your eye completely refer to one of the videos that i've done in the past on how to understand the histogram and how not to trust your LCD, especially the LCD of an entry-level uh, DSLR. So that's, that's about the introduction. Let's go straight into the shoot and we have our wonderful models here already waiting for us. Okay, so let me introduce them. We have Pranav Joshi here. He is, uh, he is a professional uh, IT guy. Right, and we have, oh, they are actually both from IT and Pune and IT, of course it goes hand in hand, right? And we have Mansi Patwar then. I will add their Insta handles here in the frame. Follow them, they are amazing people. You must see their Insta handles too. So, you know the drill. Right. We're gonna get into the shoot and you are today our models, right? Yes. Okay, so all the best. Thank you. Okay, see you. And, uh, two, three uh, demonstrations and you will know exactly how to use this flash. Okay, let's get into the action. Okay, the first one that I'm going to try and do is to shoot without the flash and understand the ambient light and then add the flash. Okay, before we start, a couple of very elementary tips. No TTL, no HSS, right? Because of which I need to work on speeds of uh, one by two fiftieth of a second or lower. To start with, I'm going to shoot in the ambient light without the flash, then going to start adding the flash. Uh, that's what I'm trying to attempt now. So let me take one shot. Nice. Now in this image, I can see that their faces are completely underexposed. Now I'm going to add the flash now. Now the guide number of this flash is 40, which means at 10 feet it will give you uh, F4 at 100 ISO at full power. I am probably at about, what, eight feet, nine feet distance. So let me not put the full power. Let me go to about th three fourth and let me see what the reading is. Let me take a shot. Okay, that's it, it's still high. I need to go under. That's right. Now, if you look at this image, it's pretty uh, flat because I'm firing straight at them. Now, let me do some indirect firing using the bounce card here. Okay. Let me see whether that's going to work here. Obviously, it's going to reduce the amount of flash because it's going to bounce off the card. 
let me increase the power and there I am so the light is much softer now now since there are two layers and they are standing in an angle I would require a little more depth in my shot which means I have to increase the aperture uh, so I'm shooting at 5.6 now at 5.6 I'll get reasonably good depth so that I can get both people in my frame because I've closed down the aperture the light uh, needs to be compensated and this flash is not sufficient in the bounce mode yeah at this distance it will not really give you sufficient uh, exposure to light which means I need to take the flash closer to them I can be here I can take the flash closer to them for which I need to use the flash trigger a basic trigger a 16 channel trigger which means you can sync with multiple flashes okay so the trigger is installed and um, I'm going to shoot now there are two ways to shoot I can if you're alone you can you know use one hand uh, to hold the flash closer to them and then shoot use the flash uh, or keep the flash in various directions and continue shooting but the danger is that you might introduce a little shake in the uh, camera unless you have a very solid you know sturdy hand um, so I'm going to ask uh, Aditya to join and help me to light this so Aditya come in please bounce it from the ceiling that way okay so one more thing is since you're working with very basic flashes I recommend that uh, well at the the maximum sync speed it might still introduce a little bit of you know dark areas it may not sync properly so if that happens don't panic just come one notch down to 200 and it'll solve the problem for you so let me uh, show that to you here okay so I'm going to shoot at 1 by 2 50th of a second and all right yeah here you can see a little bit of dark area and let me now go to 1 by 2 hundredths of a second so let me introduce this uh, sphere from uh, flashboard uh, pick a boom stand from Amazon stores very easily available and of course you will need help of an assistant so Aditya and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, you know shoot at the full length here okay what I'm trying to now do is to use two flashes but uh, remember there is no radio slave here they are photo cells so you will either require a dark room so that one flash can fire the other flash because of its the you know sudden change in the uh, light intensity okay or you have to use the trigger on the camera and the hot shoe on the trigger uh, you should be mounting the the flash on camera flash well in which case this flash will fire and this trigger will fire the second flash very important when you work with uh, DFL 088 okay so you must remember this okay Aditya so now we have moved indoors um, Mansi is in front of the makeup uh, table and uh, I'm trying to use the gel and try and get some interesting shots here so I have the purple gel here uh, with the 088 uh, using a boom arm what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this light the makeup lights as the key light and I'm going to use uh, the color gel to kind of outline her hair and the kind of reading that I'm going to do is first I'm going to do an auto reading of her skin okay and then switch it to manual mode keep that same exposure throughout the you know shots 
okay so that i don't get varied exposures because the problem with auto exposure is the moment you move the camera you know it will keep readjusting the uh, you know shutter speed or the aperture depending on which mode you are in okay so let's get into the shoot uh, aditya i need your help again right that's nice okay now profile complete profile yeah and you look at him okay ready yeah so this is what we shot amazing yeah. hey you like it yeah of course Hey thank you very much thank you, so much. you guys Thanks. were wonderful I'll see you Thank you Bye. and uh, wish you tons of insta followers For sure I'm going to give a special shout out this time Yeah thank you Okay bye. thank you. See you You can say bye to our viewers too Bye guys Bye follow us <laughs> yeah. I'll see you soon For sure See you Bye bye, -bye. <laughs> Okay now let's get the lights on Right Okay was it that TC or what well did you well the most interesting question is did you like those images at all or what now this goes on to prove that you don't really require very expensive uh, uh, gear to create interesting images definitely not to start with what you really need in the first place is good imagination which obviously can't be bought uh you need to definitely cultivate it yourself these days the big brother google he will give you or she whoever i don't still don't know they give you as many options as possible look at them pick the one which you like pick the one which is appropriate for that particular uh situation that you're going to shoot use that as your take off point right end of the day um uh, what you need is an interesting image however hard you try to copy something you will still leave your own stamp on the image that you want to create you may not do it on the day one but you will do it eventually the yeah, app there is nothing wrong in copying initially all right it will start triggering the right nerve joints in your brain um and eventually you will start thinking original stuff so all you need is imagination and giving yourself a little bit of time well if you are someone who wants to learn photography of course uh, we at pixel village have a brand new website pixelvillage.com is india's online photography education portal where we have put together some of the finest photography mentors taking classes just for you So in this video we also want to support uh, some of our very close associates who are also into sharing their understanding photography understanding with the world. So this time it's going to be Jesse Obroy. He's an amazing photographer, he's a mentor in Pixel Village, an amazing landscape photographer. Look up Jesse Obroy, Exploring Light in your YouTube channel. Subscribe and support him. He's an amazing guy. So I think we are done with this uh, video right anything left okay bye for now <laughs>